Aloha. We're going to illustrate how much we need to do church as a team by the fact that I don't have a team helping me do this video. But I wanted you to see the sunset behind me and understand that the God who created that is the God who created the teams that you and I are serving on and serving with. And this was God's design from the beginning, starting with the community of the Trinity. It was never meant to be a one man show. It was always meant to be all of us doing this together. And there's very few books that paint this more perfectly than Pastor Wayne Cadero's book on doing church as a team, which I started reading back when I was in Bible college in our church planting course. And even to this day after being in the church planting movement with Pastor Wayne Cadero and New Hope movement for so long. I love being able to come back to these principles and these truths because it's straight out of God's word. So we're just going to do a quick review of chapters three through seven. Hopefully it'll give you an idea of what it is that he's talking about so you get hungry to dive in a little bit deeper. Chapter three, the title is Don't Forget Who You Are. Pastor Wayne says, I'm convinced that the influence a church has on its community will be determined in large part not by the personality of the pastor, the size of its building, or how long the ministry has worked in the community. It will be determined instead by the percentage of involvement in the ministry of each member. This marks the transition from attendance to ownership, from being consumers to contributors. He uses the example, of course, of, of Esther, Queen Esther, and, and when Mordecai comes up to her and says, hey, you were born for such a time as this, if you don't God will deliver his people, but he wants to use you. Pastor Wayne says each one of us has the opportunity to be used by God, and we will determine, according to our participation, what role we play in the deliverance he wants to bring and the impact he wants to bring to our generation. And I love how he talks about how he describes every minister, every minister as um, as wherever they work. Their occupation is their pulpit. And so he he um, kind of will... will take a, a full-time minister and disguise them as a as a construction worker or as a, a teacher or a barista and and that's their pulpit that's their example where they're going to show the love of Jesus that we as ministers uh, are, are everywhere that we go not limited to an hour and a half on a Sunday service and that we are citizens of heaven and our job that we cannot forget is to minister to those around us uh, the chapter four is all God's children got gifts doing church as a team isn't one person doing a hundred things it's a hundred people doing one thing each each of us doing what it is that God's called us to do best using the great example of the cruise liner versus the battleship on a cruise liner I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise I've been on one you got a hundred people serving you on a battleship everybody has a role and they're all serving each other and the overall goal of, of winning together and we do this through the office gifts the serving gifts and the charismatic gifts God never said find a church where everyone in it looks like you were to find a church where everyone looks like him. So don't compare, collaborate. And this is so important because you and I can miss out on what it is that God has for us when we compare with each other. Um, chapter five is finding your fit. Your potential is like an iceberg. You know, with an iceberg, you see 10% of it floating at the top and the other 90% is just below the surface. And yet most of us were just satisfied with the 10%. When you and I begin to serve on a team, we tap in to that other 90% by finding our design. This is a great acronym that that uh, that he uses design D stands for desire this is what you and I are passionate about the E stands for our experience what have you experienced in your past both positive and negative that can tie into where it is you guys gonna have you serve your spiritual gifts which you can read about in Romans 12 1st Corinthians 12 Ephesians 4 1st Peter 4 even individual style some of us are introverts more like my wife some of us are extroverts more like me where I love to be around people well, that plays into where it is that God would have you serve. Your growth phase is not, it's not measured by how long you've been in attendance, but how much of God's word you're applying in your life. And then of course, natural abilities. <laughs> so if you're asking me about uh, joining an athletic team, that is definitely not one of my natural abilities. If you're asking me, hey, would you be willing to talk to people? Yes, I can do that. And so that design helps us to know where we can find our fit. Chapter six, the fastest way way to the throne, which of course is serving. It's not the size of the task, but the size of the heart you put into the task that makes what you do something beautiful to God. 
Pastor Wayne writes, when we serve, we'll know amazing joy, experience healthy accountability because we're not doing it alone. We're doing it with each other, which helps us to grow and experience accelerated growth. I, I tell people in my membership class when they come to uh, at New Hope, I say to the right off the bat, I said, if you're looking for a place where you can just sit, you're probably going to get frustrated with New Hope in a couple of months because this is a place where we believe you can only truly be a disciple of Christ and grow in Christ if you're finding a place to serve. Now, I just got back with, from a trip to the Holy Land with Pastor Wayne, and we visited the Dead Sea. And most uh, motions are 4% salt. The Dead Sea is 22% salt. So it's it's rich in minerals and nutrients, but it is dead. Unlike all the other bodies of water, all the other masses around there, it's abundance and it's wealthy, but it's lifeless. And the reason is because it has no outlet and no inlet. Nothing is feeding it and it's not pouring into anything else. And if you and I aren't careful, we become just like that Dead Sea or that fig tree in Mark chapter 11, where Jesus walks up to it and it looks like hey this should be life-giving and instead it was dead and how do we make sure that we are life-giving well we serve with simplicity and excellence we like that sponge where where god fills us up and then he rings us uh, out so that we can serve with our gifts around us leading to of course chapter 7 where we mine the leadership gifts in the church this is pastor wayne's famous teaching on the dream releaser and and how you and i have the greatest privilege in not only allowing people to release dreams in our lives but how he's called us to release the dreams in others and and the biggest key here is that you and i are secure in who god's made us to be uh, in, in this trip to Israel, I stood on the very field where this little 17-year-old shepherd boy walks up and faces down the Philistine giant. Meanwhile, shivering in the tent is the king, King Saul, who is supposed to be the one facing down the enemies of Israel. And David walks out, not with a confidence in himself, but with five stones and a sling. And I actually picked up stones out of the very creek where David would have found his five smooth stones. But he didn't walk out onto that field with confidence in himself or his slingshot abilities, but in God. And of course, we see the story unrolling that as God continues to use David, who is serving with his gifts and abilities, we see the insecurity of Saul, who rather than rejoicing in how God is using David, he's insecure and he begins to compare himself. The biggest key to us releasing others is that we enjoy seeing others succeed. And you and I have each been given five smooth stones, which we're going to take down giants with, but our job is to also help others find their five smooth stones find their battlefields to help overcome their giants and when they do we're gonna be the ones cheering the loudest because that is what the kingdom of God is all about that's what it means to do church as a team thanks so much for listening please read more of this book it's incredible